over the past several weeks, I have been busy with projects around the cabin, as you've probably seen if you've watched any of my more recent videos. Today is no different. I can't do much outside right now because it is absolutely freezing outside. The temperatures are ranging anywhere from a few degrees below zero to just a few degrees above. So I'm kind of trapped inside the cabin. The other thing is, is that I'm still tending to a recent injury from falling off of my stairs. My last video, I showed making some minor repairs to the stairs, which you can kind of see over my shoulder here. And it was painful at best to film that video because I was having to move the lights and the camera around to get different shots. Nonetheless, the show must go on and I still have projects I need to tend to inside the cabin. And one of those is closing up this area right here between the wood stove and the kitchen. And in order to do that, I'm going to build a temporary wall using some cedar planks, the same cedar planks I described in my last video. And it will be temporary. The reason for that is, is eventually I'd like to replace this wood stove with a wood cook stove. And when that gets done, I'll need to build in a true backer for that new wood cook stove. As you can see with the cedar planks that are beside the wood stove, opposite of where I'm standing, they go all the way to the top and will rest in front of this log beam over my head. But I need to frame out this area between the backer and this log here. So I've been doing some research on YouTube, my favorite uh, all around educational resource to figure out how to do the framing and build this wall. The problem that I'm running into is that this log is not symmetrical and it's actually tapered. So it's more narrow at the top and wider at the bottom. I know that the framing that I'm gonna do is going to sit between these two, but I'm gonna to need to get some measurements at different heights so I know exactly how to frame this wall out. did was I cut some two by fours just shy of the top of this uh, equal lengths and then measured in between the bottom down here that way I made sure that I had straight uprights and you can see the taper of this log here now um, what I'm gonna do is cut another piece to run across the top and that way I can nail it into the beam up ahead and I'll toe nail it down below and then that will give me the framing for my wall and allow me to put in my cedar planks. So I plan on hanging some cast iron uh, pans from this wall that I'm creating. And so I went ahead and just preliminary mapped out where I would like those pans to rest on the wall, made some mental notes of where they'll be hanging and then what I'm doing now is just marking those increments off on the wall. Um, and this is where I'll be putting my studs in. So I've gone ahead and cut my studs to size. I'm going to line those up center on the measurements that I've just made. I'm gonna use my speed square here to just true these up. And then I'll be nailing those in with a couple of nails once I've got all those in place, I'll flip this over and repeat the process, turning up the board before nailing it in. And once that's done, I'm gonna put this back up and then nail in the header um, before proceeding. Children, do not try this at home.
So I've got a number of cast iron pans that I need to place on the wall and I need to figure out exactly where I need to put in my hooks. And I kind of mapped this out earlier, but without actually having the um, wall up, I couldn't exactly mark out exactly where the hooks are going to go. But I think, yeah. So if I just do it like this, that gives me a rough idea of where I want them to go. And then all I'm going to do is mark out inside the handle. And then I'll just begin by putting up my hooks. Okay, so that's there. This one's here. That is the first thing I've done in this cabin that I think actually looks true to the thought of how I picture this cabin, like a cabin. I know everything else I do looks a little bit um, over the top, but this is the true rustic feel and look that I was going for. So as I showed you, the wall is framed out with two by four construction on the back and where each of these hooks is placed is where one of those two by four studs is. So I don't have to worry about the wall bowing or those hooks coming loose at any point. And now all my cast iron is positioned between where I'm cooking and where I'm prepping my food. So in a future video, I'll show you the finished kitchen. Uh, but as you can see right now, it still is just um, unfinished. I'm still working on the counter and I'll explain why in an upcoming video. But let me show you some other things that I've done around the cabin over the last couple of days. videos ago I talked about things I needed to do to make these stairs safe and the very first issue I pointed out was an opening here at the top of the stairs. Well that has since been remedied because I was able to cut down a 2 by 10 on a slant or diagonal and tack that in on top of a ledger board and then secure it underneath with some studs that I've tacked up um, underneath and now that opening has been closed up. And it's a good thing because this guy loves to play at the top of the stairs. And I'm always worried that his paws are gonna slip off or as he's running down the stairs, he's going to miss that step and his legs would go through there. If that were to happen, it would surely mean death for Kenai. So now Kenai no longer has to worry about that. I don't have to worry about Kenai or I falling through that opening. And it's just one of a multitude of safety issues that I've taken care of around this cabin recently. So let me show you some of the other things that I've fixed. And I don't know why I procrastinate because all of these things that I'm showing you were really simple and easy fixes to put into place. Right, Kit? He has so many names, he doesn't know what his name is. One of the other things that I've done recently for my own safety was install these latches on top of the hatch door that leads into the cellar. These latches I put here because if somebody were to break in through the exterior hatch and make their way into the cellar, they would now find it very difficult to lift this hatch and gain access into the main part of the cabin. Uh, so these I can secure very easily this way and keep this latch or hatch rather closed. And I also have hatch or excuse me, latches uh, down below as well so that I could secure myself into the cellar and prevent somebody from following me down into there should I need to. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that think I'm afraid of my own shadow, but really I'm not. When you put your face out there 
in the public and you live alone, you gotta take some extra precautions. And that's all I'm doing. So speaking of extra precautions, let me show you what else I've put into place. Speaking of precautions that I've taken around the cabin for my safety is I've installed some simple gun racks um, near each of the doors and up in the loft. And the reason for this is, again, should there be a predator outside, whether that's four-legged or two-legged, I will be able to defend myself. I put my 4570 here um, just so I can defend myself against a bear that might be trying to break into the cabin. And I put um, a gun upstairs on a gun rack, my AR, and then I have other guns positioned around other openings in the cabin as well. When I leave the cabin, however, uh, for any length of time, these get locked into one of two gun cabinets that I have in the cabin. Um, so I don't leave these guns out um, when I'm not about. All of my firearms get locked up for safety reasons. And um, speaking of things that I've done recently, one of the things I did was this ice box, which was a replica, and I just repurposed it into a working ice box. And I've gotten some questions about how is it holding up, and it is doing fantastic. So I have not changed the ice blocks today. So it's actually been 48 hours uh, since changing the ice blocks, and I do need to change them out now because if you can see on here, uh, I'm just barely above 40 degrees on here. And that means I definitely need to switch out these ice blocks in here um, because bacteria grows between 100, or I'm sorry, between 40 and 140 degrees typically. So I'll be switching those out after I get done filming this video. So, as I mentioned, lots of things that I just procrastinated on that I'm just getting taken care of around here. And one of the things that I've been procrastinating on is my kitchen counter, as I mentioned earlier, how it's not done. Um, so maybe in the next video, I'll show you why I procrastinated or what my procrastination has cost me um, in getting that counter done. But that's for another video. So until then, I do want to thank everybody for watching today. I hope that you're all staying safe out there. Um, I got a lot of responses to my last video about how I injured my foot, and it turns out a lot of you have taken a spill lately and injured yourself or know someone who has. So I'm hoping that everybody is on the mend and doing well. But either way, enjoy some outtakes. Hopefully that'll keep you uh, laughing and in stitches that way and not in actual stitches if that makes sense. Until next time, please stay safe and take care. I'll see you then. Today, it's way too cold to be outside. It's ranging anywhere from low negatives, low negatives. When I did my video, when I did my video, like Vincent Price, When I did my video regarding these stairs, if you'll recall seeing that video, there was a big opening here. That's because, well, I don't know why it was, so I'm not gonna even cover that, am I? <laughs> I sure am doing a lot of crawling around on my hands and knees in this video. No, nobody needs to see your butt. No, I'm trying to film. Take your butt that way. Nail gun.